If you want to talk to us, and we got a lot going on in the studio today. Give us a call, 804-638-3419. Mike King is here. We got friends in the front. We got breaking news. I got news people in the house with us, too. It's not just me. All right, so, you know, I left the light on, and an old friend came back. <laughs> back. Okay, so we got the WRIC ABC talent in the house with us, the news team, with the brand new uh, 4 p.m. news. All right, so uh, Eric Phillips is here with us. He's, he's, he's family, but he's been around Richmond for a while, a long time. He got ties here. He left, went to, you know, CBN, but he came back, and now he is a partner here. So I'm going to just throw it over to these guys here, on the mic with Mike. Heather and Eric, welcome to the program. Well, Mike, thanks so much for having us. We appreciate it. Yes, happy to be here. Hey, Mike. Alrighty, so, uh, Heather, we're going to start with you. So, new to Richmond, you've been here forever. Forever in my three weeks. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, Heather Hope here. Uh, tell us who you are and what you do. I always say it's a business show. Yeah, so name is Heather Hope, new here to Richmond uh, at WRIC, ABC News, Channel 8, with co-anchor Eric Phillips here. We're excited to kick off our 4 p.m. newscast starting Monday, September 12th. So I'm here especially for that. I uh, last came from CBS affiliate in San Diego. I was in Oklahoma City before that, and I started off in Bakersfield, California. So I'm from Atlanta originally, and I went to school at The Ohio State University. My, my grandkids are Buckeye kids. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they're Buckeye kids, yeah. Oh, you know, we used to go to the, the, the wing place in German Village. Uh, what's the, the chicken wing place that's all over? Like a Wooster's? I can remember. See, that's what happens when you get old. I'll remember, but we always enjoyed uh, my son. He lived in Franklin Town. So, uh, yes, yeah, so shout out to him. Uh, we're going to talk about you being here. We're going to talk about some journalism, how you got started. Okay. And uh, so, folks, also... Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to have some contests today. We have tickets to the Squirrels game. Shout out to my man, uh, Will Will uh, Melton from Exponent 21. Four tickets to uh, the game on Wednesday. The, uh, I think it's it's next Wednesday, the 14th. I think that's what it is. We also have a giveaway for uh, some passes. It's uh, gift certificates to uh, the Capital Ale House. So shout out to my good friends over there at the Capital Ale House, Amy DeFore and all those guys. Eric Phillips, tell people who you are and what you do. Well, hopefully folks will remember me. I'm not a, a stranger to this neck of the woods, but uh, I came to RBA back in 2015 when I first was working uh, for our competitor station. We have not to be named. We are not. No, no shade, <laughs> but we are not. No, no shade whatsoever. None, None whatsoever. But that's why I first came to town and left in 2018. And as you mentioned, went to go work for CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network, out of the DC Bureau. So I still was living here in RBA, though. We used to follow your travels. Yes. Me and my wife used to follow you on your travels up to DC every day. Because I would post a lot on Facebook about my travels, and I had a little section called the Metro Maestros. Yes. Because if you ever take the Metro in DC, you know that there are singers, people playing instruments, you know, blowing horns. I mean, you can get some really good performances at the metro stations in D.C., so I always enjoyed that, and sometimes I would stop and go live with them and, and have a little fun, so it was it was a good experience, uh, but after a couple of years, this opportunity opened up, and it meant I didn't have to travel from here to D.C. every day, which was, um, which was a nice change, because although doing it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, because I rode a commuter van, coming across town is even better. How about that? <laughs> that? That is true. That cuts down on that commute. That's right. It, it That's definitely right. does. Alrighty, so folks, tell us about your uh, the upcoming news at four. Uh, you guys are moving into that space now to get us. There's a lot of information out there. Let's talk about what people can expect for that. And also, I, I, I'd be remiss to say, you know, uh, pa uh, Minister Tiger. Uh, Eric is a, is a religious man as well. Amen. Whenever I get around, you guys I always want to say, I'd be remiss. <laughs> if that's, my, be remiss. Sister, my, my, my sister's a preacher, so I always like to say, I'd be remiss if I, you know, I didn't want to thank the folks over at WRIC. Having talent go places is very important, and I understand that. So a uh, shout out to them and thank them for that. So uh, you guys can tell us about the newscast. So, you know, here's the deal. WRIC is going to be the third of the three 
major affiliates here in this market to start a 4 p.m. newscast. And so we gave the others an opportunity to do their 4 p.m. and see what they're doing right and see what they're doing wrong. And now we're going to come at four and dominate. That's the, that's the basic plan. That's the way it works. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, we, so we'll be starting on Monday, uh, the 12th of September, as Heather mentioned. And we have been preparing uh, immensely for this opportunity. Uh, recently, we did some research in the market, and we know what people are looking for. We know the type of news they're looking for at 4 o'clock, and that's what we plan to give them. Uh, we, we are familiar with the audience. And so we are tailor making a newscast for people who want news at four o'clock. And we found out recently that there is an increasing appetite for news at four. Yes, yeah, so more people want to see news at that time and not just regular news, but also traffic. People want more weather. You know, there's always something up and down, roller coaster weather in Richmond. Is it raining? How hot is it going because to be? Because where you came from, I, I, I spent a lot of time living up the coast in Monterey. Where you came from, there wasn't roller coaster weather. At the weather was just nice. All the time. All the time. So you yes. see the forecast, it would be almost the same, and it was a copy and paste, wash, rinse, repeat kind of forecast. Here in Richmond, you need to stay tuned. Yes, you can. Now, I'm from up north, and, you know, I'm waiting to get to October when they turn the heat off because it's a little, it's a little bit on the hot side. All right, so, folks, let's talk about journalism. And so uh, I had your uh, colleague on, and we talk about, so John Rogers came on the program, and we also talked about, journalism as opposed to TV personalities. That you guys are journalists. And that's where we talk. So let's talk about the pull to journalism and, and how did it happen and, and how did you get to TV? Wow, so for me, mainly just starting um, with newspapers. So I did that while I was at The Ohio State University and from that background and the more and more internships that I did, be it in Columbus, be it when I got my master's at USC. And we were looking at all things London now, but I got to intern at the CBS London Bureau and that was so fascinating to see news on this macro international level. Because here, you know, we're so uh, provincial, we're like, oh, we just find out maybe in our city, yes. maybe our county, where you're on that level, they know what's happening in Spain, Greece is doing what, everyone's following everything. So just really attracted to journalism and then just seeing how the business continually evolves. Because there's that fine line between media personality and true journalist, and that line gets crossed each time, it gets blurred, and there's so much to it, so many facets. And that's what excites me and brings me back to the business each time.